Alright, so while you weren't looking, I went and I modeled another 2x1 chip. Uh, this one will use, you know, a randomly inter interchangeable with the other one. So, uh, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm going to take out all of the modifiers by applying them. Uh, you can't do it while you're in that mode, so just hit tab and then you apply it. So now it's no longer mirrored, it is actually uh, all of the vertexes that you see uh, are, are on their own, so you know you can make it asymmetrical. There's a bunch of vertexes in the middle that you need to you don't need to delete, but there's no reason for them to exist. So you just select them and hit delete, and if you want to, you can change it over to line select and select this extraneous line uh, and hit X edges and take it away too. Uh, there's another extraneous edge, and there's another extraneous edge. Uh, I guess that's good enough. So uh, the reason I can see through it is this button here. Uh, so now I can see that we've got a ship that doesn't have any modifiers, so let's go ahead and add a modifier. We'll just add the same bevel modifier that we did to the other ship, and then apply it. Oh, we can't apply it in that mode that we are. Apply it. And that'll just give us a little bit of slightly organic roundness on the cheap. So what we're doing now is I'm going to show you how to create the UV map in a way which will allow us to uh, make it so that when we have a paint job, we can apply the same paint job and the same icons to multiple classes and shapes of ship without actually having to uh, define the paint job for each ship. Uh, and this is this is a, a way where you, you're trading off um, quality UV maps for uh, uh, UV maps that are generic. And that's on purpose. The whole point is that we don't need high quality UV maps for these kinds of things. Uh, we just need UV maps that are flexible and we can interchange them easily enough. So we're going to hit 7 to get the above view, and then we're going to hit 5, and this enters into orthogonal view. You can see how it changes between being able to see the depth and not. And that means that we'll have a. a, a, a we'll be able to see without any sort of. Uh, uh, there won't be any. There won't be any perspective involved in our in our situation here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click here to create a new, or drag here to create a new window. Uh, switch it over into UV, and right now you can see there's no UV map. So there's actually a lot of built-in UV maps. Uh, some of them, you know, you depending on what you're trying to do, you can do really well uh, with some of these that just work automatically. Um, but in our case, none of these are going to work very well because we don't have any seams defined and we got a really rough object. So we're going to use just project from view to give us a baseline here. And then we're going to go ahead and right down the center of this bevel. Uh, oh, I need to turn this back on so I can see through it. So right down the center of the bevel, I'm going to hit uh, 3 to get a side view. And then I'm just going to grab it. And that just grabs the bottom of the ship, which we'll go ahead and drag off to the side. So now we've got the two pieces of the ship separated. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this image into four different quadrants. We're going to have the main uh, visible upper quadrant, and then we're going to have the side quadrant, we're going to have the lower quadrant, and then we're going to have the engine quadrant, or the you might want to call it the port quadrant. Uh, ports in this case meaning things like engines and weapons. So to do that, we've got to go ahead and select the pieces that we want to put in each of the part in each of the ports. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the depth so I can select them as I please. I'm going to switch over to selecting faces because we are in fact selecting faces. And I'm just going to hold shift and select all the faces I want. You can do this with um, uh, box select if you'd like. Uh, I don't in this case want to because there's not very many of these vertexes. Alright, so I'm also going to go ahead and select these here. And this will be one paint element area. Uh, and this will be the place where, actually I'm also going to... Yeah, that, that's fine. I'm, I'm debating on whether I should include any of the others, but let's go ahead and split it up into faces. Uh, and I, by faces I actually mean ship faces, uh, the sort of thing that the players will see. Uh, and so this will be the place where you put your primary uh, decal, your primary paint job up. 
So for example, if you were going to have red and black stripes, this is the place where you would put your red and black stripes. So we'll go ahead and we'll drag that off into the corner. Uh, and let's go ahead and make the run air, the side runner area. So we'll just select a whole bunch more here. Holding down shift and selecting. And this will be the place where you put your um, uh, your ship's logos. Now the difficulty with these is that we actually need to have this side be the exact same but inverted. If we were still mirroring that would be quite easy. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult because we're not mirroring but that's okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select both of these sides like this. Did I select the bottom there? No I didn't. That's fine then. And then we're going to go ahead and hit 3 to get a side view. And we're going to go ahead and do unwrap project from view. And that'll just project those faces so the rest of them are still in the places they were before. See? Uh, so now we have the side area. So let's go ahead and stick that up here too. So now we've got the top and the side. And notice that they're completely different sizes. Don't worry too much about that. Just remember what the heck you're looking at. Uh, so then we also need to do the front. So let's go ahead and for the front, um, let's go ahead and make this front edge here. Is this a? Yeah, okay. So that's already part of the side. Let's go ahead and make this front edge here uh, separated from the rest. So this will be the primary front. And this will be something that we use. I hit, hit 1 to view from the front and hit unwrap project from view. Now this is a very, very cheap way to do this. Uh, it's not how I, re how I would recommend doing it if you were going to um, aim for a high quality map, but we're not. We, we don't really care that much. Um, I need to select it and pull it away from the because it got overlocked there. Alright, so now what we have is we have these three here, the top, the sides, Oh, that's not what I want to do. There, scale. And right now I'm just scaling them to fit them into these. Each of them will fill up uh, one fourth. So as you can see, I'm fitting them into a two by two, two by two. Each of these darker blocks is one eighth. So I'm fitting them into the upper left hand corner, and the middle corner, and so on. Uh, and later on we'll probably have to refine that, but that's okay for now. And then here, and these will be the basis for our uh, logos and our paint jobs uh, and so make sure that you line them up such that you can remember where the heck you put them and now in this case what we may actually want to do and that would be difficult because we don't have a line up the middle if we had a crease up the middle we might flip them but that's okay we might actually want to write like across the front with a logo that doesn't mirror so we will go ahead and do that so we've got a couple other pieces left over uh, that, that you may not uh, you may not want to leave hanging let's go ahead and split out the engine uh, right now we've got uh, turn back into vertex mode and select through, see through. Let's go ahead and select all of these engine components like this. But remember that these uh, turn off see through there. Remember that these belong to our primary top. There we go. And you can see that now we can see where the engine was, and that's the engine right there. Uh, so let's just go ahead and. Uh, 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 try to do a different kind of unwrap. Just oh, I didn't want to do that. Control Z does that quite well. Um, I'm trying to remember which of these works. No, no none of them are going to work because um, it's not it's not correctly correctly split up. So just do a project from view. Um, and now this is going to work fine. Where's the? Okay, so this is going to work fine for our engine. So let's go ahead and just like before, fit it into a one by one block or one, uh, one quarter of the screen here. There we go. Uh, now, I don't actually know what that is. Um, that must be from the rest of the front here. So let's go ahead and grab the rest of the front. Turn on transparency and grab it. Like so. Oh, uh, some of these belong to... Yep, there we go. Oh, there we are. Got those. Oh, stop that. Um, are those part of... no? Nope. Okay. Yeah, that should do. 
So now we have what, a, what, what amounts to be the front and underside. So we're going to go ahead and go to a front view, and then we're going to hit 2 to tilt down until we can get a decent view on it. And then we're going to hit Unwrap, Project from View. And so now we've got a front view, and we're going to go ahead and make that... Come on. We're going to go ahead and make that another quarter of the map. Uh, now, this is just for the sake of uh, ease, and I don't know what the heck these are. What, what are these? I'm using Alt and Shift to select them, but I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure what components of the ship those are. Oh, um... I actually still don't know. Are they parts of the engine? It looks like we've got some miscellaneous leftover parts. You know, I'm not going to bother with you with them right now, so we'll go ahead and we'll create another quarter of the image for miscellaneous random bits. Which I think are part of the engine. I think when I did the engine forecast, uh, the engine um, uh, broadcast, I only got part of them. I don't know what the heck those three are. I must have misclicked somewhere. But you know, that doesn't matter for, for the purposes of showing you in this tutorial. Uh, later on we'll do this in a different way that, uh, uh, that's a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit nicer. So we're going to go ahead and save this uh, Blender file, but we're also going to export the UV layout into Shipcore uh, uh, UV layout. There you go. But we have to go ahead and open up the other ship that we created, which was the first one, as you might remember. And we have to split it up into the same sectors. So you have to remember what the sectors were, and then select your ship with those same sectors in mind. So I'll turn off the see-through. So let's go ahead and start with the... Oh, first let's go ahead and um, apply our modifiers. So let's put in a bevel again, just for kicks. Uh, there we go. Oh, the bevel screwed up. Or is it the mirroring that screwed up? No, it's the bevel that screwed up. I'm not sure why the bevel is screwing up, but that's okay. We'll just leave it without a bevel. Maybe there's something else we can use just for con just for fun, like, uh, um, what's a skin? Oh, actually, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> that ended up looking neat. Unfortunately, it's got a lot of illegal geometry. Um, so we're not going to use it. We could just go with the classic subdivision surface. That never goes awry. Alright, um, well let's go ahead and apply the subdivision surface and then just do a little bit of editing to make it give, give it a little bit of sharpness. Uh, uh, I have to remember that it's no longer mirrored, so you have to select on both sides equally. Uh, like so, and let's go ahead and pull these up like so, um, and then on the bottom, let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a, oh, that's interesting, it looks like we got some internal, yeah, we got some internal geometry that needs to be taken care of, so just turn yourself into line select and start selecting those internal lines and deleting them, edges, edges, they're called edges. Um, there's another one. And this happens when you use mirror and you're not very careful. And as it turns out, when I slap these things together, I'm not very careful. Did I just select? Yeah. Don't uh, don't delete something that's actually on the outside, or uh, you know, or you'll feel stupid. There are definitely some lines there on the inside. Uh, and by the way, if you're new to Blender and you're not sure how I'm picking out these lines that are on the inside, don't worry about it too much. These lines are just a pet peeve. Um, in ma in models this uh, undetailed, they don't matter. Uh, they're not going to actually cost you anything. Um, the only reason I want to delete them is because they complexify the UV mesh, um, which is annoying. Now look at all those internal lines. There we are. I think that's all of them. So uh, you see how Blender tried to keep our UV mesh, in, our UV map intact from before. Uh, so let's go ahead and 
shape just a little bit more here because it, it looks too... There we are. And I'm just reshaping it to give it a little bit more of a starship look. Uh, it looks a little bit too smooth and uh, uh, uninteresting. There we are. That'll that, that'll do. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put all of these UV map elements into the same place as they were in the other diagram. So let's go ahead and grab the part where we're going to put our primary uh, our primary upward facing face decal. So you just grab. Oh, we can go into face grab because it's a little bit faster. Uh, clickety 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 click, and then we do uh, uh, UV mapping project from view. Ooh. Let's uh, let's remember to go into this view and orthogonalize, and then do it. There we are, and then that goes into this upper portion right here, like that. And then we've got the sides, which, as you might remember, have to be parallel, so or you know opposed. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, go to the side view with three, and uh, unwrap project from view and move those into the second grouping, like so. And then we've got the front. Go to the front view and unwrap, project from view, and that goes into the third quarter, like this. Uh, and then we have at the top the engines, so let's go ahead and go back into see-through mode and go back into vertex mode. Go to side view and we'll just select the engines. Oh, I accidentally forgot to deselect the front. So try that again. Side view. There we go. Okay. Um, it looks like these belong to the face, so deselect them. You could tell because they were up here. And then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we could go into top view, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go into rear view, which is control 1, and then I'm going to hit 2 a couple of times until we get something that resembles a nice angle, and then we will unwrap and project from view. And that will be our engine mesh. And then we had, as I recall, um, the primary front and bottom mesh. Go back into face edit and just grab them. Oh, I don't need the see-through. That'll just make things more complicated. Did I grab these? No, nope, not there. And I think these belong to the engine. Yep, all right. So that should be everything. Let's go ahead and go into the same kind of view that we had before. Since it's going to end up being a square part, try and make it square on your screen so you don't have to tweak it later. Uh, now, as I said, this is just a. This is not the recommended way to do UV mapping. This is a very, very fast and dirty way that just lets us uh, have the same components in different parts. And we don't have any leftover bits for this area. That's okay. So let's go ahead and save that ship and export that UV layout. And we'll export it as this. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open that file up in a, a image editor and paint ourselves a mask. So hold on a second while I do that. Okay, so here we are in everyone's favorite image editor. It's actually my, my least favorite, but I know that everyone has access to it, so it's what I'll use. I actually have a tablet, which is that cluttering, clanking sound you hear. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually use a tablet, but uh, this isn't actually difficult to do with just a mouse. So the first thing you're going to do with these is you're going to go ahead and create a new layer, uh, and you want it to be transparent. Uh, and you just stick it on top of the, uh, uh, actually you stick it underneath the uh, the layer which has the outline. Okay, you can't drag and drop. Uh, GIMP is not advanced enough to understand dragging and dropping. Uh, and grab the tools, put them somewhere where you can reach them. Uh, and it doesn't really matter which ship you start with first, but you do have to keep your eye on whether or not uh, they make sense. So we're going to go ahead and just fill in with a, uh, uh, a pattern pattern fill. Let's see whether or not they've got a generic metal. Here, we'll fill in with this recessed metal pattern. And just poof, there we are. So now we have kind of a metal-y pattern. We'll do the same for both. And what we're going to do is, oh, that one I didn't create a new, Im there. 
click, 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 click. All right, there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide the top layer. And we're going to save these as, oh, sorry, it's GIMP. You're going to export them as, which I have bound to control S because it's fucking save, uh, UV layout. You're going to change this over into base um, text. Uh, and you actually only, I, I did that on both, but you don't need to because they're the same thing. So uh, you could have just as easily done it on just one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of a label, something that'll give our ships a little bit of uh, uniqueness. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to select something like a pencil, and we're going to write in white. And you always write in white, because that means that when you change the color of the mesh, you change the color of the overlay, which is incredibly handy. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Here we go. Yeah, I wanted to zoom in a million percent. There. There. Uh, and let's just write. And since we're on our own layer, we don't have to worry about interfering with anything else. Uh, this does not need to be 20. Oh, it's not going to be... Oh, that's right. The new version of GIMP doesn't do pressure sensitivity right. Um, or at least I haven't figured out any way to do it. Uh, if you can't tell, I don't use GIMP because it's not as good as people say it is. In fact, it's freaking terrible. Um, but that's okay. Uh, a lot of people like it and have gotten used to its idiosyncrasies. So we're just going to put an A there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hide the top layer and make sure that the bottom layer is hidden as well because we want the transparency. And then we're going to save that, sorry, export that as a, a 2 by one uh, uh, logo or side logo A, like so. So now we're going to go ahead and open it up in Unity, which is somewhere here. There you are. It automatically re-imports all that stuff, or imports it anew if it never had imported it in the first place. So here you can see that we've got our base texture. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and rename that, take away the A, because it does, it's a generic 2 by one base texture. Uh, we're also going to duplicate it by hitting Control d Now this creates a duplicate that we're going to call Normal. Um, and we're going to make that a normal map, and we're going to make it not very bumpy, and we're going to make it smooth, and we're going to hit apply. And that'll give us just a little bit of actual bumpiness to our ships. So we don't have a material for our ships yet, so let's go into material and create one. And uh, let's go ahead and just drag it onto our ship so we can see it change live. I recommend dragging it onto the capsule object, otherwise you might accidentally make your particle effects have something. It needs to be a bumped diffuse, or a bumped specular is actually a better choice because we're talking about metal. So go back into here. This should really be in textures. Well, whatever. Uh, so we put the base texture here, and we put the base normal here. And you can see that our base normal is way too aggressive, so select it and make it way less bumpy. There we are. So now we have uh, a ship that looks like a tire. <laughs> and obviously you're, you're welcome to change that to whatever you would like. You don't have to have a ship that looks like a tire. I just happen to at this point. So we have a material now um, for these, which is down here in materials. And we can actually change it so that it's got uh, so that it's got a different level of shininess, which will change how it glints in the sun. You can play with that all you'd like. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create another material here, which is going to be called uh, Ship Logo Material. And this one's actually going to be a transparent material, like so. Uh, we actually don't need it to be bump diffuse. Uh, bump, we don't need it to be um, bumped. We just need it to be specular. There we are. Because these don't have any... Uh, we could have them have a raised element to them, but we, we don't at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and drag our A onto them. Um, uh, oh, crap, I just selected it. There we go. Uh, unfortunately, Blender has created some files. There we are. 
made it a little bit confusing to find it for a second there. So when you're going to try and add a second material, you actually need to uh, click on this and have it in here in the sidebar because you can't just drag the second material on or it'll overwrite the first material. So once you've got that open, you can just drag that over here into the materials list and boom, you can see that we now have an A. If we wanted to change that, no biggie at all. You can actually just change it. Now if you change it algorithmically in the uh, program, that's the best way to do it because that way you won't change it for every ship. When we change it here right now, we'll actually end up changing every ship to have this color. But uh, uh, that's fine for the moment. And if you were to look at the other side of the ship, you can see how there's an A on the other side as well. Uh, so if we were to create a ship that had, let's go ahead and save that, and let's go into our uh, garden and take a look at our dummy ship. Now our dummy ship has been using this uh, uh, this capsule collider with this mesh renderer here. Let's go ahead and change that out. Um, we are actually not going to use this uh, mesh renderer at all, so remove it. And we're going to put another mesh renderer inside of it, so. Uh, we can actually use the Blender file in this case. Um, drag and drop. Where is the dummy ship? There it is. So here it, you can see that we've got our new uh, dummy ship with the other system in it. Uh, and you can see that the, as I mentioned before, you got to watch out to make sure that your uh, colliders stay intact. So we change this collider to being on the z-axis. And that works fine. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be roughly right. Because uh, remember, we automatically aim, aim at center of mass. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add in those materials, just like before. So we select the dummy ship core like this. We drag in the ship material as the primary material, like that. And then we drag in the ship logo as the secondary material. Uh, and if you go over to the side, you can see that there's an A on it in the same place. And that's because we took such care in putting the ship's in putting those same sectors in the same spot. Similarly, if we go, ab go ahead and go back into GIMP here, uh, come on GIMP, there we go. Well, let's go ahead and turn back on that outer layer again. Uh, okay, that doesn't work. There we are. So we have this uh, top, as you might remember. Let's go ahead and just uh, select an area around that, create a new layer. Select an area around that top and just fill it in with um, white because white is the color we need. But because we want to be a little bit unique, let's go ahead and cut out a little bit of a hole. Right? No, that's too soft. Now let's make it a star shape. Boom. Right in the middle, like this. There we go. So hide the uh, the map like that. Hit Control S. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we don't screw that up because uh, I think that there we are. That'll be a little bit better. All right. So then hit Control. Uh, sorry, you probably have to hit Control E. Um, I just saved it over the wrong file. Not very brilliant of me. So let's save it as a different file name, which we will call um, uh, Top star. Oh, it's not side top star, it's just top star. There we go. And then we're going to hit control Z a couple of times. Uh, and then turn the... So we didn't have, we, we've been keeping them on different layers for a whole reason. I accidentally saved over the wrong file, so I've just got to make sure to turn that back on and save it at the same place it was. There we go. So now we have another new material to create, which we will duplicate this ship logo and we will call this a ship top and we will make the material uh, have for a texture the top star. Here we are. Boom. And now when we add that material to our uh, ship core materials, there we go, you can see that we now have a nice decal on the top of the ship. There's a piece missing because I didn't color it in as well as I should have. Uh, and you can, you can, in fact, create a duplicate of that, uh, just like I did before by selecting it and hitting Control D, and make that into a bump map. Uh, and, doop. 
I'm calling them normal normals because that's what uh, Blender calls them. They're, I think they're technically bump maps, but that's okay. No one, no one really cares. I don't think. Actually, I take that back. A lot of people probably care. Uh, so we want to make this into a bumped specular, and then we want to add that bump map. And there you go. You've got a little bit of a depth to it. And that doesn't look like quite enough depth, so let's go ahead and pump it up like this. There we are. Now it looks suitably deep. So if we save that and we go back out into our spawn, we can look at the player ship. We can actually add the exact same material to it. Did you get popped in? No, you didn't take... Come on. There we are. And you can see that we have the same kind of image. So if you've got a preferred um, layout for your ship, then even if you switch classes of ship, you can still have the same kinds of icons, uh, matching icons. And more than that, if you have an enemy fleet, you can synchronize them all by using the same color and type of icons. Uh, now, obviously, how you do the UV mapping uh, will change what shows up where. Uh, for example, this A shows oop, this A shows up really, you know right there, whereas in the other one it's kind of low. So you just change around the UV map to your heart's content and uh, in doing so you create a very generic uh, UV mapping system where your icons, can, will, your, your various overlays will work fine regardless of the ship class. Alright, well that's long enough I think.